Hey guys, it's time for some dimpling fun. So the next step in uh, making the vertical stabilizer is actually dimpling all the parts. And you can see here, I have the DRDT2 uh, from Experimental Arrow. It's a dimpling tool. I've built, as you can see, per uh, the instructions or suggestions that these guys have made a little table. I didn't quite follow their instructions because I thought I could do it better. Uh, and sure enough, it works really well. But it's just a, a little table, carpet covered, to allow me to place the metal parts on here and actuate the dimpling tool uh, without having to kind of balance everything on a single beam, which is right underneath here. Real light, real simple. Uh, can easily pick it up and move it if I need to. And yeah, I'm, I'm actually happy with it. That's going to be fun. So now I have to go through all the uh, bunch of parts, uh, a lot of parts, specifically on the skin here, and dimple. Fun. Uh, one thing I noticed my videos were kind of missing was uh, any kind of intro at all. I'll uh, work on that down the road. But also some notion of exactly what I'm working on in the frame. So what I figured I would do is place right there, okay, dramatic and lame, but down on the bottom here, I was going to put uh, a little setting to show you what step I'm on, what section I'm in, and what I'm doing. And over the course of the video, it'll update depending on what step that is. Might help down the road you, uh, you or me look something up or, you know, this is supposed to be instructional both for you and for me, so hopefully uh, it'll help someone someday. So anyways, just thought I'd pass that along. After getting the vertical stabilizer skin on the table, I probably reread the instructions five or six times, and then it took me forever to finally do that first dimple, followed by my using uh, one of the rivets to test and make sure that I had just completely screwed up. But nope, it worked out nicely, and then it was just a matter of doing it over and over and over again until the entire side was done. I have to say, though, that this dimpling tool made my life really a lot easier than I have to imagine using the uh, older C-frame and mallet method. Every single dimple was uniform and looked just like the dimple before it, which is what you're going for. Uh, a little more expensive as tools go, but completely worth it in my opinion. The shag carpet table, which was their idea, not mine, also made things smooth going. I will say, though, when you create it, you get shag everywhere, so have a vacuum handy. All right, I've done one whole side. Um, I've been testing every once in a while with this little rivet, some of the, you know, see how it feels, Let's see what it looks like. It looks good. Um, not too deep, not too shallow. I think it's right. I cannot get these two uh, here just because of the nature of the machine. I can't, I can't quite get get it over there to be able to do those two. So I'll have to use the pop riveter on those. I can almost get that one. Maybe if I, I might be able to get this one, but I know I won't be able to get that one. So we'll definitely have to play with the pop riveter. But there you go. Whole bunch of uh, dimples. Now to flip it over and do the other side. I actually was able to get uh, one of those. Uh, later on, I figured out if I if I removed my table, it uh, allowed me to to pull the whole thing out a little bit, and I got an extra couple millimeters, which let me get that one hole. But the the one right up against the crease, there was just no way, and that one was definitely gonna have to be done with the pop riveter, which turned out to be uh, an interesting experience to say the least. Again, I was leery, but I got in there and gave it a whack and hey, <laughs> it worked first try. Well, so I used the um, pop rivet dimpler on this one thing because I couldn't quite reach it. And you can see it did dimple, but it, I guess I pulled too hard. Um, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little ugly. It, it kind of marred it up a little bit. Uh, eh. Live and learn. I'll do it on the other side, and hopefully I won't screw it up. It really wasn't that bad. It just kind of left a round circle. Uh, here you have me getting into step seven, which is taking apart the frame and then dimpling all of the skeleton where the skin touches it. A couple times you'll see me uh, use a very clever tool, which is just a pair of pliers with a dimpler soldered on, and that 
That was useful for getting places that I would not have been otherwise been able to reach with my dimpling tool. But there you go. This is it. We're done dimpling the uh, vertical stabilizer. There we go, all dimpled up. Hopefully that's everything.